We'll continue with the conversation in a place where we can't be scared of the rain. So as uh, we were getting disorganized a little bit, you were talking about Moshi Conference, yeah. where you'd gone to Nairobi, and that is after you were fleeing from um, Amin, who was, you know, after you. Tell us about the Moshi Conference. The Moshi Conference was, came as a kind of a surprise. Hmm. I think I should say it started in my office in Nairobi, that, I, that it can be collaborated from the writings of Prof Professor George Kanyihamba. Mm. Because about four days before the Moshe Conference, 18 of us who were also at the Moshe Conference met in Nairobi mm. and, and had a, a, a meeting, which continued uh, the next day in the home of Professor Kawajere. But then we left and joined the Moshe Conference. Uh, we were 30 in the Mosh Conference. Mm. Uh, I think I should say 31, because there was one who was not a Ugandan. And that one was Ben Mkapa. Oh, ben okay. Mkapa was then at the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Tanzania. Incidentally, I talked about the East African Students Union when we were in, in America. In, in the New he was one of our advisors because he was a, a, Kenya, a Tanzania's delegate at the United Nations. So we used to sit together many times. But this time at the Moshe Conference, I sat next to him in the conference. And the conference was chaired. I was, I was half an hour late, but the first chairman, I understand, was Professor Kabwejere. Somehow they turned against him and threw him out in the first hour. <laughs> and, and got another uh, chairman. And got another chairman. Mm. And another chair, he was a man, fortunately. So he was a chairman, indeed. Mm. <laughs> and the chairman was... Mm. So here we are. The purpose of the conference, there, there were two aims. Number one, we are 22 different organizations which were fighting against Idi Amin. Mm. The purpose was, the first object, objective was to create one organization, mm. which we did. And the second objective was to pick somebody who would replace Idi Amin. Did you have someone in mind? Did I have one in mind? Yes, like yes. the group. Did you agree on a few names and had no, a few were, ones? No, there were only two names if you have, which were advanced at mm -hmm. that time. But the main one was Professor Le. Mwanga, Paolo Mwanga. I had met with him more than 10 times in London. And he, at, all, at all times, his candidate was one, Professor Le. So when the war had started, Tanzania against Idi Amin, I'm saying Idi Amin deliberately, mm. because Tanzania was not fighting Uganda, it was fighting Idi Amin, mm. as indeed Museveni, when he, he was fighting in the NRA war, he was not fighting against Uganda, he was fighting against Obote. You can now see that no, nobody is one person. As a matter of fact, if President Museveni left today, Connie would turn up in Kampala and say, I wasn't fighting Uganda, I was fighting President Museveni. Mm -hmm. So you can see why I, I'm saying that main problem of our, of, our, of our country is the office of the president. And, and until Ugandans wake up to that and see how to get rid of it, mm -hmm. we're going to have all these endless, endless problems with it. In any case, when it came to time, when the time came to nominate one who would be heading the Uganda National Liberation Front, UNLF, with, with clear understanding that as soon as the war would be over, he would be the president replacing Idi Amin. Mm. So when it came to time, when it came to nomination, a man called Dr. Uh, Bishop Okoth was there. He nominated Paulo Mwanga. And he, Paul Mwanga was seconded by another one, later one. We all later them, for, uh, one called Dr. Madi Madi, seconded Paul Mwanga. Mm. Then a man called Dr. Sinabulia, whom I said was the secretary, the secretary to, the to, the to the conference, nominated Professor Le. And that was seconded by a late Sam Sebagereka. Any other nominations? The chairman called. There were none. Nobody talked to Obote at all during that conference. 
and people came here saying, no, we, everybody knew that your body wasn't sitting behind, and uh, uh, but uh, even Vinaisa was just warming up the chair, which Vinaisa uh, uh, retorted to and said, why? In Tepe Woma, you know. <laughs> so why should I leave it for, why should I leave it for money? Oh, yes. So anyway, so we took, we, we took we, the election was by show of hands, shamelessly. But we, then, so we could be able to tell who voted, exactly, who didn't vote. But Omuanga and Lule, who were good friends, were downstairs in a cafe, seated at a table uh, and drinking coffee. So we voted, first of all, on Paul Omuanga. He got, he got one vote from the man who nominated him. Surprisingly, even the one who seconded the nomination did not vote for him. So... When he, got, when he got one, we clapped without even waiting because already we knew that Ule was had going won to be the by a landslide. Mm -hmm. So that's where we got Ule. We didn't have any other one in mind. Nobody was not. Nobody else was. Mm. And the conference lasted four days. From Moshi, we went down to Dar es Salaam. And Obote had sent seven people with the Tanzanian army to be political commissars in Masaka and in Nkole. The seven people, three were Banyankole, four yeah. were Baganda. The Baganda were headed by Paul Mwanga himself. And Samuel Mugwisa, one of my late neighbors here, mm. another one called Samuel, uh, not Samuel Mugwisa, was Joseph Rukwago, son of a lady called Zanai. She used to be on the, uh, at a place called Zana on Entebbe Road. And then there was Francis Vega. So those four came back. They were recalled. The Wanyankole were headed by Eva Kasisi, who is still alive, by the way. Mm. Uh, he's down in Kauku. And uh, one, another one, I don't know where he is, called Kabgorwa. And the late Edward Rangaranga. He was an interesting character. He had a, a, a brother of his who was living near my, my parents' home in, in Vukasa Island, in Sese, uh, as, a, as a... So what was their main aim, the seven who were coming here? The seven of the, of the ones who... Yeah, that those sent, were sent, yes. To convince the people of Uganda area around there that we were the ones coming, you know, and that they should, they should be, saying. We should not, we should not be, they should not be scared. Hmm. It's the actual the Baganda coming, you know. And oh. the Banyankole were supposed to convince the Banyankole on the other side that we, Yankolians, are, are coming, you know. We so are the ones in. We are the coming, we are the ones who are chasing Idi Amin away. So, so don't, don't worry. Now, much of what then happened after we, we had left uh, Moshi, we went to turn to, to Dar es Salaam uh, for a few days. I remember one occasion after the Muangas and Wakasisi had returned, Professor Le invited all of us and said, Mwari Mnyelele says that since now you have an organization which is going to be in charge of everything, you let some of you go uh, and be the commissars in, in where, the, where Idi Amin had been chased away. Mm. So he asked for volunteer. No one volunteered. Why? They, they, they were, I, would, I don't know whether they were afraid or whether they were seeing something else. It's more likely they were seeing something else. Mm. Because when we all walked out, a schoolmate of mine who was with me at Budo, but at the conference, who did not attend the conference, but was in town, called David Waswa, called me and said, why don't we volunteer? So he said, okay, we'll, we'll volunteer. We'll go back and tell the professor. So he went there and said, professor, we will go. Fatija kugenda. Namlaga oro. Kujemasaka. To join the war. Ah. Oh. And, and the professor said, bana bangiti mugenda. Don't go. You, you'll be killed. These Tanzanians are, 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 are liars. Bana hmm? msaji balimba. Baja kubachila. Don't go. So we said, professor, if we don't sacrifice, Idi Amini will not be defeated. And, we're going, we're, and for you, yours was personal because you know what Amin had done to you. Exactly. So, so he said, we'll, we'll go. Okay. So, so he gave me a letter to come to Massacre, create an army, which I did, incidentally. I, I, 
I recruited about 3,000 young fellows. Had you been trained before? Uh -uh. We took two weeks training. These soldiers don't have much training. They <laughs> just they scare people for nothing. <laughs> All right, I want us to halt it just a little bit here because that speaks to the drive to capture power. Amin is out, and a little later, I'd like you to delve us deeper into the role of Paolo Mwanga because he oh. seemed to be a cornerstone oh, oh, oh. in the politics of the country post independence. We'll take um, a, a dive, we'll take a bow at this particular one. In the next episode, we'll be talking about the fall of Idi Amin, a few presidents who lived for a few years in between aborted two returns, and then thereafter, uh, after another coup and a guerrilla war, we have the current government that is in power. You're still watching NBS People in Power. Until we meet again, God bless you. Visit the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store to download the Afro Mobile app.